Pastor Lau and Pastor Dala Haprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church in Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's anointed teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Lau. Our church consider the church as a family. We are not an organization. We are not trying to build any big organization or anything to make profit. But this is a family of God. We want to see people grow and serve God and love God, on fire for God, love Jesus. Amen. So that is our attitude all along, that the church is a family. The church is the house of God, the family of God. So whoever a member here, we, we uh, treat you as our family members. and We love you. We pray for you. Today, I'd like to um, share the last message about our mouth regarding what we need to be careful of what we say. I shared this message two times already in the past few weeks, and I'd like to wrap up today. It's a short message today, so that's why we have some time. Uh, let me review a little bit what we learned. In James chapter 1, verse 19, I read a few scriptures here to remind you or to review what we learn. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. The Bible says clearly that we need to be watching our mouth. We should be quick to listen and slow to speak. Why? Because the Bible says in James chapter 3, verses 5 to 8, even so the tongue is a little member, and boast great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Our tongue is like a fire, little, little organ, but can burn the whole forest. Little, little tongue here can cause divorce, can cause broken home, can cause you to lose your job can cause you not to get promotion, can divide the church into two groups and split the whole church by the tongue of gossiping and talking negative among people. The tongue is a woe of iniquity of sin. The tongue is so set among our members that it defies the whole body. In other words, how do you know a person? By listening to what he says. Because the tongue represents the whole body. And set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So I need to bring this message again and again to remind you to grow up more, to step up more to the next level of your life, of your spiritual walk. I want you to go higher. And one of the aspects of life that we need to go higher is the area of controlling what we say. And the tongue has power. The tongue can bring death and life. The tongue can heal or can damage and can wound people. The tongue can... Build up lives or tear down life. So that's why it's so important to really watch your mouth carefully and let the Holy Spirit control your tongue. It's a member of your body that we need to really pay attention a lot. And not only that, the Bible talks about prayer. That when we pray and we want to get the result, we have to watch what we say the rest of the time, why we are not praying. A lot of time, we don't get the answer from our prayer because we say wrong thing of our mouth on a regular basis. And that's diluting the power of our prayer. I read the scripture to you and you can see that God promises the, power of the powerful prayer request that you presented to him. And whatever you ask in my name that I would do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Wow. He did not say, I might do it. Jesus did not say, let me think about it. He said, I will do it when you pray in the name of Jesus. 
But why we don't get the answer from our prayer? Because when we pray on Sunday in a church, but Monday to Saturday, from the same mouth that we pray and praise God, we say a lot of wrong things. We say negative things. Maybe we pray for our kids to do well, but Monday to Saturday, we were complaining to our co-workers at work how bad our kids are, how terrible they behave. And we keep complaining and we keep gossiping and talking bad from our own mouth. And that's why it dilutes the power of the prayer on Sunday and you don't get the answer. Look at what the Bible says about the same mouth. You can get dilution and you can get contamination from the same tongue and the same mouth. Either praise God and pray or you gossip or you complain. James chapter 3 verse 9 to 11, the Bible say, With it we bless our God and Father. And with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does the spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? So when you put bitter water in the glass of pure water, that glass of water will be contaminated, will be diluted. The same thing with your mouth. Whatever you say, it will be powerful or not. It depends on what you say the rest of the time of your life. So I'm reminding you today again to be watchful what you say. We learned from the last two times that there are two major problems with our mouth. Number one is murmuring, complaining, fighting faults. We should not do that. We should watch our mouth not to complain, not to murmur. Because every time we complain, the Bible shows us that we open the door for the enemy to come and destroy our life. Remember this, every time we complain, we open the door for the enemy to come and destroy our life. We learned that in detail in the first sermon. The second thing we learn is that we should watch our mouth not to gossip, not to judge, not to pass judgment or criticize anybody. We have to be very careful not to look at people and then begin to open our mouth and judge what they do. Because when you judge people, you will be judged. Let me ask this question. How many people want to be judged? Raise your hand up. How many people want to be criticized? How many people need the grace of God? Raise your hand up. How many people need the grace of God in your job, in your business? How many people need the grace of God in your health? Okay. If you want the grace of God, you need to sow grace. You sow grace by not judging people, not by blaming people or criticizing people all the time. Because if you do that, you will reap the same thing. God will judge you. God allows the enemy to attack you because you judge other people. So we have, we have to be careful with our mouth not to judge anybody, not to touch anybody with our mouth, especially our own brother and sister in the same church. Amen? And we should not judge any ministers, the preacher and the minister of the gospel. We should be careful because otherwise we will be judged as well. If we want to be gracious, we want to receive the grace from God, we need to be gracious to other people. They may make mistakes. They may do something wrong, but just sip your mouth. Don't bring it up to people. Don't tell the whole world what mistake they make. Because when you do that, you are not gracious to them. And how are you going to get the grace from God? We need to be gracious to other people. And again, even Jesus talked about do not judge and criticize and at the end of his talking, he talked about prayer again. Let me read to you in Matthew chapter 7. I'm reviewing right now. He was talking about do not judge. Matthew 7, 1, 2, 3. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourself. For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. And in accordance with the measure you use, to deal out to others. It will be dealt out again to you. So if you judge others, you're going to be judged as well. Why do you stare from without 
at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but do not become aware of and consider the beam of timber that is in your own eyes. So Jesus was very strong. He said, "Do not judge, do not look for mistake and negative things of other people." And he go on. He goes on and on and on to talk about do not judge. And at the end, he say in Matthew seven, the same chapter, so seven to eight, keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keep on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be open. He end ended the teaching about do not judge with the issue of prayer. He say if you don't judge, you ask, you will receive. If you don't, if you watch your mouth carefully, don't judge, don't criticize people. You seek, you shall find. So you can see the correlation between your mouth and the answer of prayer, and I believe that the sin of our mouth is the most difficult one to deal with. It's, it will be a big miracle already for all of you, including me, if we have not complained or judged anything since this morning until noon time. It's a big miracle if we can watch our mouth for five hours not to say something wrong. It's it's a big big problem with our mouth. Amen. So we have to be very careful. When I'm serious, I mean, I'm teaching you this not to decorate your brain. I want you to change. I want you to take this teaching seriously. Amen. I, and I take really the teaching of God seriously. Actually, yesterday I read the scripture from Mark chapter one, verses 23 to 24. Uh, the Bible says that if you have faith, you can move the mountain, and whenever you pray, God will answer you. And suddenly, verse 25 say. And whoever offend you, you should forgive them. I right away, I was repenting. I say, God, I'm still holding grudges against some people that talk bad about me and hurt my feeling. I repented right now. I'm gonna forgive them. I will forget all the things that they have done against me. I want to love them the same, so that I will have power in my prayer. Amen. So I'm serious. When I read the Bible, I really want to obey what the Bible say. So I want you to be serious about learning the Bible. Let's look at Matthew 12, 33 to 34. Today I talk about the third thing you have to be careful with your mouth. Matthew 12, 33 to, 20, uh, to 34. Either make the good tree and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Bible talk about the heart and mouth connection. Whatever is in your mind, whatever you thinking, eventually it will come out through your mouth. I can guarantee. Whatever in your mind, you're gonna eventually speak it out. Therefore, we need to be very careful. We need to understand that our mouth is so powerful. Whatever we say, it will bring life or death. It can encourage or discourage. It can destroy your life or bless your life. Do you know that a lot of people get divorced over words? A lot of people lose their job over words. A lot of people get into trouble because they say wrong things, say idle things that they should not have said. So we have to be careful. And the only person can tame your tongue is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You cannot tame your own tongue. You need the Holy Spirit to help you to tame your tongue. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 12, 35 to 36. The good man from his inner good treasure flings forth good things. And the evil man out of his inner evil storehouse flings forth evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, men, everybody, men and women, will have to give account for every idle, imoperative, and non-working word they speak. Do you know that one day you need to stand before the throne of Jesus Christ? We call the judgment seat of Jesus. And you need to give your account. 
the report. Why you say that that day? God gonna judge you according to what you say, the idle word you say. And a lot of time we say that you know I don't mean it. You say something and cause trouble, and you say I don't mean it. I'm just kidding. But it's not true. You're not kidding. You mean it. You try to hurt somebody's feeling. I believe that if you really say wrong thing, you need to repent and ask God for forgiveness and turn around and ask people that you say wrong thing to forgive you. Amen. Don't give excuses that you know I don't mean it. A lot of time we say idle conversation. We we use idle conversations. We just want to fill the airspace. We we just want to kill the time. We just sit in, in with one another and eat dinner and just oh, I don't want to, I don't know what to say. Let's say something. And just say something without any meaning. And sometimes whatever we say are so idols and so idle and so damaging and destructive to people because we just want to say something. We have to be careful. Don't say it if it's not going to help anybody. Don't even say it if it's not going to build anybody up. Just keep your mouth shut and be quiet. Amen. Amen. Don't say it. Some of us have this kind of habit that we always say something. For example, do you know this is really killing me? Have you ever heard people say that? Oh, this is really killing me. This is make me sick. The weather today, too much cloud and too much rain, make me sick. Have you ever said that? This this weather really killing me. And then you keep saying that. That's why you have a short life. That's why something killed you, because you you are cursing yourself that you are sick and tired and sick and tired. That's why you are sick and tired. Because you say idle things out of your mouth all the time. You just say, "I'm blessed today. The rain comes in Seattle. The tree look green. We are not in the desert. Nice to have rain in Seattle. Instead of I'm sick and tired of this weather. No, don't say that, because you will curse yourself. Amen. The Bible say clearly that whatever we say will impact all of us. Look at what Paul say in the Bible. To warn us what happened in the Old Testament, in First Corinthians chapter ten, verses nine to eleven, we should not tempt the Lord, try His patience, become a trial to Him, critically appraise Him, and exploit His goodness, as some of them did and were killed by poisonous serpents. Nor discontentedly complain. Everyone say complain, as some of them did, and were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer. Or death, so the Jews or the Hebrew complain and complain and complain, and what happened? Twenty-three thousand people died because a serpent bit them. Wow, it's a very painful experience. They wake up, they get a revelation. Wow, we complain too much. We need to repent. Now these things befell them by way of a figure and as an example and warning to us. They were written to admonish and fit us for right action by good instruction. So, whatever happened in the Old Testament is a good lesson for us to learn that we should not repeat the same story. We, in whose day the ages have reached their climax, their consummation, and concluding period. So, you can see here that the Bible warns us: don't complain like the people in the wilderness, because we. Can get into trouble, amen. So today I like to talk about the last thing quickly and short. One thing that we should watch our mouth. That is to give opinion when no one wants to hear it. Let me repeat one more time. Okay, you don't complain, you don't judge, and the third one, don't give opinion when no one wants to hear it. Why? I'm going to show you in the scripture. We have to be careful, especially those who talk a lot, personality, personality type A people, and especially people who are old believers who know a lot of Bible, and especially those who are the gift of teaching. Some of you are women who are very good in preaching and teaching. It's one thing about standing behind the pulpit and preach on in the church that you are assigned to preach, but you have to be careful. You are not called to be the preacher of your husband. 
You don't go home and preach to your husband. You are his wife. So that's what we have to be careful that we are not called to be a teacher of our husband or our dad and our mom. Amen. I went back to Thailand this time. When I sat with him, I'm not his preacher. I'm not going to teach him. I just sit and listen. Listen, listen. I did not give my opinion to my dad. He did not want to hear. Period. I just listened to his opinion and that's it. Because I know if I open my mouth and tell him my opinion, he's going to be mad at me. And our relationship will be broken right away. What I did, instead of giving my opinion, he said a lot of things I don't agree, but I didn't say any word. I just bought flour and gave to him a, a cup of tea. And I knelt down before him and bow to his feet and say sorry for all the things that I make him have headache in his life. I asked him for forgiveness. I did not say any word. I did not give any opinion. After that day, my dad is a changed man. Usually when I call him from America and talk to him, he begin to get mad and he told me bad things about me. He started to complain about my behavior and all these things. And I just listened. But after that day, he was happy, he was talking, he was joking with me. He stopped being bitter against me. You see? But if I keep my opinion and argue with him, no, you're wrong, dad. I'm right. That relationship will not be restored. So be careful. Don't give opinion when people don't like to hear. If you are a teacher in the body of Christ, like me, you have to pray specifically. Is this the time that I use my gift? Or this is the time that when I use my gift, it's going to be a curse. It's going to be a bad problem. You don't go anywhere and always teach people. You have to shut your mouth sometime. And don't teach people. and Don't share your opinion. I have authority behind this pulpit because this is the church that God asked me to take care of. But when I go to other church, when I go to other church, it's not my authority. I keep my mouth shut. Whatever the pastor is doing is not my business. I care about my own business. I don't want to bother with other people's business. That is his church, not my church. I need to shut my mouth unless he asks me my opinion. Otherwise, I just keep my mouth shut and don't say anything. When you walk to somebody's church, don't criticize. Don't even say anything. It's not your business. That is their church. Amen? The same thing you walk into any office. I mean, this applies to anything. You walk into somebody's house. Maybe you like the furniture from Europe. But you walk into somebody's house and they use all the furniture from China. And you walk in and you say, you know, I, thought, I, I think your furniture is not good. <laughs> you think they're going to like you? I think your furniture look bad. No. Don't give opinion when they don't ask you. Just keep your mouth shut. That's the big problem of some people that never watch their mouth. Amen? A lot of problems happen when we like to give our opinion, when people don't want it. And some parents, I want to warn you. If your kids grow up already, maybe your kids turn 20 years old, 25 years old, and you try to build a relationship with your kids. But the way you do is wrong. Instead of just loving them, show a good example to them, you just always tell them what to do. Because you think that that is the way to build a relationship, is to give your opinion all the time. Oh, you're wrong. Your clothes is today is too dark color or something. You always give your opinion. You're going to turn your kids away. Because you give too much opinion about their life. People need freedom. People need liberty. Amen? People need to make their own choice in life. We cannot go in and step in and always criticize and give opinion about what they're doing. I'm not telling you to go one to extreme to the point that, for example, if people are going to drink poison and kill themselves, you say, it's not my business. You kill yourself. I don't mean that way. I, you have to stop them. Or, or they're going to drink alcohol and go out and, and, and be a drunk driver. You have to say, I think you should slow down. Don't drink too much. That is the loving warning, but not opinion. That is a warning. So I'm not saying that you just shut your mouth and let people die. 
you still need to warn people when they do wrong. But I'm talking about giving your personal opinion. Whenever you want to open your mouth and say something about somebody else, what they're doing, you need to ask yourself this question all the time. Do I say this to really help them? Or I say this just to let them know that they are wrong and I'm right and my opinion is right. You need to ask yourself this question all the time. Whenever you want to say something about somebody else, are we helping? Are we just giving opinion? And I want you to go a little bit higher level in your spiritual walk. People who love to give opinion all the time are immature. Let me repeat one more time. People who always give their opinion when people don't want to hear it are immature. Why? Because they are prideful and they are insecure. When you are insecure, you want to show up, show off that you know a lot. Is that right? Two, when you want to give opinion all the time, it means that you say, I'm right and you are wrong, and I want to tell you what is the right thing to do. And it is a sign of pride. We are not always right. And there are so many ways to do things. There are so many ways to perform surgery, I tell you. I never told any neurosurgeon how to do surgery because my way and your way, I'm not going to criticize you. I'm not going to judge you or try to give my opinion how I perform surgery. Everyone has their own way. Amen? The same thing with preaching. There's so many ways of preaching. You cannot go, go and say, my opinion, I think you are wrong. No, it's not our job to give opinion. The Bible says clearly to avoid strife, disharmony, and disagreement. And a lot of time, strife happen in the church or in the family because somebody give unnecessary opinion to the people that don't want to hear at all. And the strife start to happen. We have to be very careful. Arguments happen when people give unnecessary opinions. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 to 10. But concerning brotherly love for all other Christians, you have no need to have anyone write you, for you yourself have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you already are extending and displaying your love to all the brethren throughout Macedonia. But, listen carefully, we beseech and earnestly exhort you, brethren, that you excel. Everyone say excel. In this matter, more and more. What Paul tried to say to the church in Thessalonica and Philippi is that, I know you are doing good already in your faith and love. Your, walk, your love walk, your faith walk. You're doing good. But... Don't stay at status quo. Don't be satisfied of where you are. In other words, you may say to God, God, I think I'm not doing too bad with my mouth. Have you ever thought that way? I'm not doing too bad. Compared to last year, I think I'm better. <laughs> I'm in the status quo now. I, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not doing too bad. No, 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 no. God doesn't want you to say, I'm not doing too bad. God wants you to excel. God wants you to improve. Step higher in how you talk, how you treat people. God wants you to grow up more. Don't say, I'm not doing too bad. I believe that we all in this room can improve some way, somehow, in the area of how we use our mouth to talk to people. Amen? We need to be careful. Giving opinion is a part of relationship and communication. You can give general opinion. Oh, I like that flower. I like Mount Rainier. Oh, Mount Rainier is beautiful. That is your general opinion. But what I'm talking about is don't give personal opinion that attack another person's personal thing. I don't like your clothes, for example. Oh, you walk into the church and you say, I don't like that worship. Your worship is bad. Don't say that. It's don't give your opinion about somebody else, what they're doing. Just keep your mouth shut. Zip your mouth. Amen? 
Don't give your opinion regarding anybody else's clothes, hairstyle, how they talk, how they walk, how they preach, how they worship. Just sip your mouth and just love them and show good example to them. Amen. Do you know why? If you are too generous in your opinion, eventually people will just treat your opinion as nothing, like a garbage. Have you ever noticed sometimes when you talk too much, people look at your eyes? But they didn't hear. They just think about the movie they watched last night. Oh, really? Okay. They think about the movie, the Iron Man number two last night. Yeah, okay, okay. After they finish talking, I don't even know what you're talking about. Because you know why? You talk too much. You give too much opinion. And people just ignore what you say. But if you are not generous with your opinion, you just quiet. Anytime you open your mouth and say something, people want to hear. What? Because it means so much for them. But if you talk too much, people don't listen. So we have to be careful about giving opinion. The Bible says clearly, I'm going to read two more scriptures and done. First Thessalonians, Today is a good sermon. First Thessalonians 4, 11, to make it your ambitions and definitely endeavor to live quietly and peacefully. Everyone say quietly. quietly. Don't talk too much. Don't give too much opinion. And peacefully. Don't fight. Don't have strife. Because I don't like the way you do things. My way is the right way. If not my way, it's my way. No. There are many ways. To mind your own affairs. Everyone say, to mind my own affairs. It means what? Whatever other people do, not your business. Zip your mouth. Don't give your opinion. It's not your business. And to work with your hands as we charge you. The whole thing is mind your own business. Do the right thing yourself and don't step in to give you too much opinion. Especially if they don't ask you. If people don't ask you, zip your mouth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The same thing in this church. If you love somebody and you want to marry somebody, if you don't ask me, and I don't say that it's not too bad, you know, I'm not going to say anything. Unless you ask me and I will say, okay, this is my opinion. But if you want to go your own way, you want to marry that man, it's up to you. Your business. If he is a bad guy, you pay the price yourself. That's why it's wise sometimes to get advice from godly men and godly women in, in certain issue of life, that major issue, like marriage is a major issue. Not to buy clothes. Buy clothes is okay. But to marry, you need to get advice from people. Get their opinion. That's okay. You don't need to listen to every opinion, but at least you get some wise advice. Amen? First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. <laughs> First Peter 3, 10. For let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days. How many people want to enjoy life? How many people want to see good days more than bad days? I don't like bad days. I want good days. Okay. Look at what the Bible says. Keep his tongue <laughs> free from evil and his lips from guile, treachery, and deceit. So, if you want to live peacefully and have good days, watch your tongue. Don't speak too much. Don't give too much opinions. Don't criticize. Don't complain. Shut your mouth. Amen? And God will give you good days. Amen. So we learn three things. Do not complain, murmur, criticize. Do not judge. Do not gossip. Do not judge people. Judge people hard, I'm talking about. Not judging sin. We know what is sin, what is not sin. And three, make sure you, don't be, you are not too generous in giving opinion, especially if people don't want to hear it. Just keep your mouth shut. Mind your own business. Don't go in and bother other people's business. 
อาเมนฮาเลลูยา How many people repent today? That you will not say too much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us how we should speak, use our tongue, how we should say things from our mouth. Father, we repent of our sin. That many times we complain, we murmur, we criticize people, we judge others. We don't see a big telephone pole in our own eyes, but we see the little little dust in other people's eyes. Father, we don't want to be judged. We don't want to open the door for the serpent to come in to kill us, Lord. Therefore, please. Your Holy Spirit help us to guard our mouth, not to complain, not to judge, and not to be too quick to give opinions and to teach other people why they don't want to hear. Help us, Father, to grow up more, to excel in the area of our tongues, Father, like what Paul say in First Thessalonians. Help us, Lord, to mean our own business and to watch our mouth carefully, so that we can enjoy days of our life, Father. We commit our tongue to you. We ask you to remind us every time when we begin to open our mouth to say some wrong things. Stop us right away, Father, by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to each other and say, "From now on, I will watch my tongue." Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 